Ethan, what's up? Hey, what's going on? How you doing? Oh, I'm good. How are you? Cool, man. Everything's good. Thanks for taking a minute out. Yeah, totally excited. So we got a collective here. We're getting into it. Yep. I like right. it. Hi, guys. Hey. What? Sebastian? Yes. Cool. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice so gentlemen, yeah. Yeah. thank you. Thank you for taking time out for Neon Jazz today, man. I appreciate it. Excited. This is the first interview for this album. Oh, and cool. For one. Yeah. yeah. I always <laughs> love that. When I can be that champagne bottle against the mast, I'm good. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's go ahead and break this bottle and uh, Ensemble Infinity. Let's talk about, before we get to that, it has to feel good for the three years that we went through with COVID to have new material, live shows, things are different. So I guess in that context, how did you survive COVID and how does this release feel? Okay. How did we survive COVID? <laughs> well, I got it twice. Both times uh, I survived. Um, <laughs> there you go. Musically though, Maybe I'll briefly go and then Sebastian, you can go next. Um, I don't know. Musically, at the beginning, I took a little break uh, from what I typically did. You know, I, I personally felt that COVID gave me the necessity, but also the opportunity to like step back um, and see my life in music as some as what it really was, you know? take a look at why I was really doing it. Um, was it for the gigs? If all the gigs went away, then what was I left with? Was it for the community? Because if I couldn't connect with my community, then what did I have when it was just me and my instrument? Um, so, but then I, I felt that I was saved because um, I ended up moving to Switzerland for a year during COVID. This was right in the middle at the end of 2020. And that's where I met Sebastian. Um, and we ended up uh, doing this program there for a year that connected us and led eventually to this album that we released. Excellent. How about you, Sebastian? Yeah. Well, to me, it was kind of similar. I, I was during the, well, I, I was in the lockdown. I was in Argentina still. I was living in Buenos Aires by, by that time. And I also, to me, it was actually a, an opportunity to start. Um, I started to get into recording myself and learning how to to record my instruments and compose in a a complete different way that I was used to. So I, I started to get a, a bit more into this world and, and exploring different ways of composing. And uh, afterwards, when I moved to Switzerland and I met I met Ethan and and the rest of the band that we recorded the, the, the album together, um, I I could kind of give life to, to this process because I was playing this music with real people, which at least two or three compositions from the album were born during this, this process of loneliness and <laughs> being at home, like working. And then, well, actually when we met, it, there was also this period of COVID uh but somehow we we managed together as a group to to survive and and keep making music together i think from my perspective that was the most intriguing thing about covering musicians during that 2020 21 22 i mean because we went back and forth it was like all right we're fine no nope, we're not it's worse now it's like we just have this whole anti-pavlovian thing so I was always curious what music was going to come out of this and talking to musicians. This to me is such a Renaissance time because it was so hard to hear musicians that are typically exuberant, ready to roll that were like, I, you know, we're just trying to figure it out, but you all wrote and survived and you met. Where are you coming at? Are you in Switzerland now? 
No, actually now I'm in Denmark visiting okay. the, the family of my girlfriend, but I'm be, I'm I'm living in Switzerland at the moment. Okay. Man, I love yeah. the Swiss. I wish America would adopt that mindset. You guys just know how to stay in your lane. You guys are just there, there's a there's a level of peace and tranquility that I wish could be bestowed <laughs> on this side of the pond. Ethan, where are you coming out yeah. of? Yeah. I'm in New York City right now. Okay, cool. All Where's right. So and I'm in Kansas City. So we're like, we got these like the lines are all kind of yeah, yeah. Time zone. Kind of battle of the time zones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Forget about it. So let's get into the project. You know, what what were the creative forces that made this final project what it is? I think Ethan go ahead and then <laughs> I will try to <laughs> the creative forces. Um well, it really sprung out of the compositions in terms of the the line being drawn from, I guess, the first note being written towards now the album being released in exactly a week from today. Um, it really ended up just being the what was going on in our lives, me and Sebastian independently writing all of this music, and then such a long time later playing it together and then such a long time after that finally recording um, and the funny thing about this recording session is that we weren't totally sure if it was going to be one project or two right we had the same band that we were playing with and together but we organized this recording session and we said okay well you have a lot of tunes i have a lot of tunes we'll just you know, split the session and see where it goes. But it ended up totally sounding like one band, one sound, um, and a pretty similar musically, a pretty similar direction in terms of this like jazz and there are solos, but also there are other influences. And it, it, there's almost this like comedic aspect in some of the music, but it can also be very serious um, and it can be sort of dreamy. Um, and it just goes a lot of different emotional directions. And we found that we both had a lot of that in common and our sensibility of composing for that group. So we just said, okay, this absolutely has to be one project, you know? So we then decided to split it into two different albums. We released an EP um, a couple months ago of the first five tracks of this project and we're re releasing the rest um next week well cool. yeah so tell me what you hope the listener gets from this album well i i i would say i mean through this whole process i think we would like to kind of i don't know i hope it will represent somehow this kind of uh, somehow I how to say like an a international band band with with like different backgrounds, but at the same time something that sounds really together and it's not like many different things that we try to put together and we manage more or less. I, I, I feel it's like it's about brotherhood and really like a friendship and some process that we went together through. We went through this whole process together um, do, within a year, I mean, like composing and playing with the same people. So somehow it's like a, a representation of something really crazy, which is like putting together a band to work for a year somehow from with people from complete different backgrounds, like uh, nationalities. I mean, we were like seven people from different countries and uh somehow we at some point when we started writing this music for these people and not for just the music we were completely aware of the what thing is 
able to do each of the members of the band. So I hope that uh, a good representation. I mean, when you listen to the album, you can feel that <laughs> somehow. Yeah, for sure. So <laughs> let's let's say you come to Kansas City and you all perform this together on stage. What would that show be like and how would you convince people in Kansas City to come see you live? You had to write a, like a notice or an ad or a social media post to say, hey, we're here. Come see us. <laughs> That's a good challenge. Kansas <laughs> City. Well, I've never been to Kansas City. <laughs> I've never been anywhere near Kansas City. <laughs> Actually, never been to Nebraska That's or Kansas City. It's in Missouri, right? In Missouri. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never Kansas been City, Missouri. Missouri. So I don't know what the Kansas, the people of Kansas City are into. Um, and I know that Kansas City has a really long and deep jazz tradition. Count Basie's from there. Hmm. Charlie Parker's from there. Yes. Right? Yep. Birds yeah, from um, here. Yeah. And this so is pleasure. something different because this is music. This is jazz, which is like at its birth, American music that to me has had this diaspora of being spread through just like the love of the music across the entire world. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so this band came together because although we're from all over, I mean, I'm from the US, Sebastian's from Argentina, the other members are from as far as Russia, Ukraine, um, Hungary, the UK, etc. You know, jazz spread to all of these places over the past 50 years or more um and has gotten to the point where you've got exceptional musicians coming from all over the world now yeah and to me that's a beautiful thing is what does jazz sound like when it spreads out and then the people that it then that then fall in love with it come together from all over and try to create a project and to me that's what's unique about this project is just the the um, cultural differences, but also the love of the same, you know. So probably I'd put some of those words into two sentences and make a pretty poster and call it. <laughs> That's a great answer. Thanks. Yeah. So speaking of live shows, what was the first live show each of you respectively saw that really either fueled your love for jazz or gave you the desire to want to be on that same stage? Wow. Asking the first? Yeah, the yeah, first. Like, like whether it's the first, if you remember it, or one of the seminal concerts early on in your life mm -hmm. that was jazz. I think one of the, uh, if, if I remember, I mean, I saw few concerts in Argentina, like uh, international bands. I remember once I, I mean, I, I saw many concerts, but one that was kind of shocking was this, uh, uh, this Mingus dynasty. This, uh, I think they, they are also kind of an octet or something like that. Um, and that was really impressive because that was, ah, okay, so this is like next level. <laughs> it was like really impressive. I mean, I, of course I, I saw other, other things, but that was kind of like, ah, this is okay. That's serious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How about you, Ethan? Um, <clears throat> well, what's coming to mind for me um well I, gr I grew up in new york and there's this festival here each year called winter jazz fest um which basically like all the clubs downtown all the local musicians just play in all the clubs at the same time and you just get like a night pass and go so you can like go and check it all out um and i used to go with my parents in high school um and like I knew, you know, I was into jazz, listening to Coltrane and whatever, and a bunch of fusion. But I remember uh, going to this venue and just walking into some random thing. I was like 15 and seeing this, like, I think it was Ravi Coltrane, actually. 
um, with Matt Garrison and I forgot the drummer, but they were just absolutely going hard. Like they were, it was like rock <laughs> jazz kind of, and I've never heard anything like that. Like what jazz can go hard, you yeah. know? And they were just like totally rocking out and like hitting so hard and like absolutely shredding, but also like listening like crazy. And it was just like, wow, really anything is possible in this music. It's proof that that Coltrane spirit never slowed down. It just sped up. Right. <laughs> Right. Well, it's affected us all for sure. Yes, it has. Gentlemen, where can people pick up the music? What do you guys have possibly for shows? How's the world opening up now that we're hit we're getting into this post-pandemic period of our lives? Um as in where can they find our music? Best place to buy it, yeah. And I know it's streamed, but where where's the ideal place? And even find out about you guys and the band and all of that. Um, well, there are a few places we're releasing on Ears and Eyes Records. I think that's Ears and Eyes Records dot com. Um, so they can sell through their website. We have physical CDs that we'll have in hand by the release day, which is next week. Um, to buy those, you can go to Bandcamp of Ensemble Infinity. Bandcamp's a great website to buy the actual music, either digitally or by ordering the CD, and that will come straight to your house. Um, and it will not be on streaming services at the beginning of release for that reason, is that we want the opportunity for people to buy it, for dedicated listeners, dedicated fans, um, to have the opportunity to buy and not just listen for free. Cool. Gentlemen, thank you for opening up. Thanks for your time. Thanks for this this intercontinental collaboration of, <laughs> of talking about the release. Good luck with it and everything as we move forward. Yeah, thank you. Good luck with you.